For over 20 years, John Cena has carried the WWE on his back. Following the massively successful Attitude Era and with some of the biggest stars in history like Steve Austin and The Rock leaving the company, WWE needed a new generation of stars to help carry them into the 2000s. And sure, there are some top names in the Ruthless Aggression Era like Edge, Randy Orton, and Batista, but we all know that it was John Cena who was selected as the WWE's flagship superstar. However, while we may see him today as a generational talent, it wasn't always like that. Before becoming the leader of the C Nation, a young John Anthony Felix Cena Jr. was nothing more than a superstar with a twinkle in his eye. So, my name is Grish from Wrestleology, and today, let's take a look back at the legendary career of John Cena to see how this young chiseled kid from West Newbury, Massachusetts became the biggest star in the wrestling industry and most people's greatest of all time. After getting the call up to WWE from their developmental system at the time, OVW, Cena would look to make a massive debut. With his legendary graduating class, including some future world champions like Randy Orton, Batista, and Brock Lesnar, Cena knew that he had to do something to stand out, and fortunately for him, his luck came following a few choice moments during the week of his debut. You see, on the June 24th, 2002 edition of Raw, Vince McMahon looked to usher in a new era of sports entertainment. As he stood in the middle of the ring, Vince said that he wanted to revamp the roster by adding in some quote-unquote ruthless aggression to WWE. He wanted to bring WWE a new edge to its product, imploring its roster to give in to his demands. So, with Cena being now given a clear direction, Cena just needed to find a moment to use that motivation. And luckily for him, on the very next episode of SmackDown, a massive opportunity was presented to him. Former WWE Champion Kurt Angle took to the ring to announce an open challenge to any superstar in the locker room, and while the crowd sat in anticipation, a man that they had never seen before walked down the ramp to stand nose to nose with the Olympic hero. Of course, this was a young John Cena, who immediately turned heads upon arrival. After Kurt asked the young man just what made him worthy of a match with him, Cena responded with an echoing message from Vince McMahon, ruthless aggression, he said with intensity before smacking Angle and taking him to the mat. And following a competitive bout with Angle, Cena would get caught in a roll-up pinfall to suffer a loss in his debut. But despite this, Cena was very impressive in his debut. So impressive, in fact, that stars like The Undertaker would approach him backstage in order to congratulate him on his performance. However, over the next few months, Cena would fail in gaining any more traction from the WWE Universe. Yes, despite his iconic debut, the character of John Cena would fail to capture any sort of attention, with a lack of growth leaving him stagnant. He even tried to win the tag team titles around this time alongside Billy Kidman in a losing effort. However, after turning heel on Kidman, a unique opportunity was presented to him on the next Halloween-themed episode of SmackDown. You see, while on tour, John Cena would show off his skills as a freestyle rapper to the boys in the back, and this caught the attention of the higher-ups around this time, specifically Stephanie McMahon, seeing this as a way for Cena to grow his character through his impressive creativity on the mic. So, on that Halloween episode, Cena was dressed as Vanilla Ice performing a freestyle rap on Stephanie McMahon, and this was really the first time Cena had shown any sort of dynamic range on SmackDown, with fans leaning into this new aspect of his character as he finally had something he could sink his teeth in. Into. From there, he became the Doctor of Thugonomics, as he verbally took down his opponents while rapping during his promos. Yes, Cena's white rapper character bred new life for the young star as he grew throughout the weeks. He even briefly had an enforcer in B Squared, but this alliance would quickly dissipate as Cena's growing charisma allowed him to stand out even without the intimidating figure behind him. In fact, when WrestleMania 19 came around next year, Cena was scheduled for a high-profile segment with Fabulous and Jay-Z. But even though the segment fell through, this was still a big sign for Cena's future considering he was already being trusted for such a major spot on the show by the company. And his stock would only continue to rise heading into the following month's Backlash pay-per-view, where he was set to face Brock Lesnar in a match for the WWE Championship. However, despite Cena's attempts to cheat in order to beat him, Lesnar would in fact catch Cena with the F5 to retain the title. Yes, despite the rapid climb towards the main event scene, Cena still had a lot of growing to do before becoming a world champion. But with Cena now getting a taste of being in the main event, he would look to remain a key figure on SmackDown over the next few months. And in order to do this, Cena would begin a feud with The Undertaker. Yes, in a match that would have felt a lot bigger just a few years later, the young Cena challenged Big Evil to a match at Vengeance following several back and forth attacks. 
Cena would also go take her into a match in a very unique way during the Go Home episode of SmackDown, as he rapped about him while standing in a cemetery taunting the dead man. However, in the end, those words would not save him from a loss, as Taker secured a victory over the Doctor of Thugonomics at the event. But despite his loss at Vengeance, Cena was still positioned among the main event scene of SmackDown as he headed towards a feud with Kurt Angle. After debuting on SmackDown against the Olympic hero, Cena would look to avenge his loss to Angle now that he had grown as a performer, and in hindsight, Angle was actually a perfect opponent for Cena around this time. Sure, his Dr. Thugonomics character was treated somewhat seriously, but Cena's gimmick always lent him the freedom to be more entertaining and comedic given the right situation. Angle, of course, is no stranger to being funny yet capable in the ring, so the build was pretty entertaining heading into their match at No Mercy. The two even held a rap battle on SmackDown, which ended in a brawl between both men, but like with his match against Taker, Cena would once again lose to Angle, putting on another fun bout that saw Cena tap out to the Angle lock. From there though, Angle would reignite his legendary feud with Brock Lesnar heading into Survivor Series, and at the event, a massive 5-on-5 five -five elimination tag match was set to take place between Team Angle and Team Lesnar, and throughout the build, Brock Lesnar would create a massive, and I do mean massive, team involving the likes of Big Show and A-Train. Cena also looked as though he was going to join Lesnar's team, but in an interesting twist, Cena would actually turn face in order to join Angle at Survivor Series, and this would prove to be a smart choice for the young competitor, as he last eliminated the Big Show in order to win the match on his team's behalf, with fans cheering Cena for the first real time since his debut. Through this victory, John would start slowly building a new rivalry with the Big Show over the next couple of months. During the Royal Rumble match, Cena was eliminated by Big Show before facing both Show and Angle in a number one contenders match at No Way Out, with Angle earning the win in order to transition into a match with Eddie Guerrero over the WWE title at WrestleMania 20. However, while Angle had his eyes set on the WWE Championship, John would also look to capture some gold at the Showcase of the Immortals. Looking to finally put this rivalry with Big Show to an end, Cena would challenge him to a match for his US Championship, and after lifting the 500 pound behemoth for not one, but two FUs, the move that would eventually be renamed to the Attitude Adjustment, Cena would pin the giant to win his first taste of gold in the WWE. And with that victory, Cena's race to becoming the WWE's next top star had officially begun. From there, Cena would begin defending his title against some of the other mid-card talent residing in SmackDown like Rene Dupree, Rob Van Dam, and Booker T. However, as he continued to defend his title, Cena would also find himself getting into a bit of trouble with the then SmackDown general manager, Kurt Angle. Yes, despite Angle literally being in a wheelchair around this time, Cena still just couldn't get the Olympian off his back. In fact, the feud got so heated that Angle would strip Cena of the United States title. You see, during the July 8th episode of SmackDown, Booker T was set to challenge John Cena to a match for the title. There, both Luther Reigns and Angle interfered on Booker's behalf, but instead of this leading to the crowning of new champion, Cena would retain the title after Booker inadvertently caused Cena to hit Kurt, leading to Kurt stripping him of the title as revenge for the accidental attack. Later that month, Booker would win the vacant championship, with Cena furious at this turn of events. But luckily for him, SmackDown would gain a new general manager as Kurt Angle was replaced by the beloved Teddy Long. And Teddy, to clean up this mess, announced a best of five series between between Cena and Booker for the title. The first man to win three victories over the other would be named the United States Champion, and this best of five series would begin at SummerSlam with them trading victories over the next few weeks before concluding at No Mercy. There, John Cena recaptured the championship. However, while this victory cemented Cena as a champion, he unfortunately wouldn't hold on to it for too long. The following week on SmackDown, Cena would defend his title to the debuting Carlito, with the Apple Spitter stealing the gold away in his first match in the company, and Carlito would immediately look to get rid of Cena over the next few weeks, desperate to hold on to the title, by having his bodyguard Jesus stab Cena in the kidney at a nightclub. Yeah, the always cool-headed Carlito would begin his WWE career by immediately being involved in a stabbing on one of SmackDown's biggest superstars. However, Cena would soon make his return to recapture the title on the November 18th episode of SmackDown, and after retaining his title at Armageddon in a street fight against Jesus, Cena would quickly get things back on track as he got rid of Carlito. This match against Jesus was also notable for Cena marking the occasion with his very own custom title, the infamous United States Spinner Belt. But with WrestleMania 21 looming ahead, Cena's career would transform 
transform as he walked into the Royal Rumble match that year, looking to punch a one-way ticket to the showcase of the Immortals. But while Cena's rise on SmackDown over the prior year would push him towards the main event picture, on Raw, another man had risen up in the ranks, albeit by very different means. That man was Batista. And as the two final participants of the Royal Rumble match, both men on the verge of superstardom went to war for a shot at history. However, in a now infamous moment in their careers, as Cena countered a Batista bomb, both up and coming stars went flying over the top rope, with them hitting the floor at the exact same time. And this double elimination wasn't even the planned finish, as we saw a furious Vince McMahon come down to the ring, but to add even more confusion and hilarity to the whole situation, upon entering the ring, Vince actually tore both of his quads as he screamed at Batista from the ground. And eventually, due to this major botch in one of the biggest matches of the year, the match was ordered to restart with the final two restarting the fight until one could eliminate the other. However, despite this second chance at glory, Cena came up short following a quick elimination from the animal. But while Raw's Batista had his eyes set on Triple H's World Heavyweight title, SmackDown would start the journey to try and find JBL's challenger at WrestleMania. JBL, the then WWE Champion, had ran SmackDown with an iron fist, with Teddy Long desperately looking to find someone who could challenge JBL and his group of henchmen in Orlando Jordan and the Basham Brothers. At No Way Out, the finals of a number one contenders tournament were held with John Cena pinning Kurt Angle to win. Yes, Cena had finally found himself in SmackDown's WrestleMania main event, potentially becoming a double champion in the process. However, these dreams would quickly be crushed, after Orlando Jordan, a few weeks following Cena's victory, would win the US title due to the help of JBL. And following this, to add even more insult to injury, Orlando Jordan and the rest of JBL's cabinet would destroy the custom US spinner belt before replacing it with the old design. Cena chose to respond to this by vandalizing JBL's limousine. Yes, the build to WrestleMania 21 was intense between these two, with fans excited to see who would leave with the belt, the rich and arrogant JBL or the constantly disrespected beats to his own drum John Cena. And that night, a new chapter in WWE history began as both Batista and John Cena won their respective matches with Cena now christened as the WWE Champion. Following this victory, Cena would do what he did with the United States title, create a new design for the WWE Championship. The infamous spinner belt would debut all as JBL watched from the top of the stage. And yes, while Cena was looking to reinvigorate the WWE title belt, JBL desperately looked to reclaim his spot on top of SmackDown. So a rematch was made to the main event of Judgment Day as Cena defended his title in an I Quit match, successfully dispatching of JBL. A few weeks later, Cena's story would once again change in a major way as he was drafted over to Raw, and this was announced during Chris Jericho's talk show segment, The Highlight Reel, with both Jericho and Christian immediately antagonizing him over the following weeks. From there, the general manager, Eric Bischoff, would make a match pitting all three against each other at Vengeance, which Cena won to retain his championship. This victory, along with a few other wins for Cena over the next few months against the likes of Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, and Shawn Michaels, began a slow process within the WWE fanbase. Despite him being the WWE champion, many fans slowly started to turn on Cena. He began to shift away from everything that made him popular in the first place as he transformed into this unstoppable juggernaut, kinda like Hulk Hogan. And for for many fans, this type of character was rather outdated in a post-Attitude Era world. John Cena's actual in-ring skills didn't help much either, as a lot of his popularity stemmed from his engaging character. So when he did get victory over admired ring generals like Angle and Michaels, that vocal adult pocket of the WWE Universe that didn't want to see Cena in the main event only grew with each passing win. WWE stripped everything that made John Cena cool and instead had him feud with stars the fans deemed better than him in every way. Hmm, it's kind of funny how WWE kept making that type of mistake, <clears throat> Roman Reigns. And heading into 2006 and the road to WrestleMania 22, the crowd became even more divided about Cena as WWE Champion. However, to add a huge surge of intrigue to the WWE Championship, an Elimination Chamber match took place at New Year's Revolution. Carlito, Kane, Shawn Michaels, Chris Masters, and Kurt Angle all entered the chamber looking to take the gold away from Cena. But after a bloody war that saw Cena come out on top, it would be none of those men that would leave that night as WWE Champion. Following the match, Vince McMahon walked out on stage to announce that Edge would be cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase for the very first time. And as the first man to ever win the briefcase, Edge waited until Cena was at his most vulnerable to cash in and win the WWE Championship. 
Not only did this make history as the first ever Money in the Bank cash in, but this would also begin another notable rivalry in Cena's career with the rated R superstar Edge. The following night on Raw, Edge held the controversial live sex celebration, cementing him as a true rated R superstar against WWE's biggest corporate hero in many fans' eyes. Cena got his revenge against Edge, however, less than a month later at the Royal Rumble event. There, Cena would recapture the gold on his way towards the main event of WrestleMania 22. However, he would have a huge challenge ahead of him as he was scheduled to take on Triple H after the game won a number one contenders tournament. However, WrestleMania 22 also went down as a rather peculiar moment for John Cena. Here, in front of a rabid Chicago crowd, Cena was once again booed. Despite Triple H firmly establishing himself as WWE's most detestable villain over the prior decade, with Triple H getting his own amount of hatred amongst the hardcore fanbase, that crowd still decided that they hated Cena more than they did the game. This was one of the biggest signs that the anti-Cena crowd was growing to unquestionable heights. And Cena's following few months didn't help squash those Cena sucks chants either. After retaining the gold at WrestleMania, Cena would head to Backlash to face both Edge and Triple H, retaining the title once again. Triple H, still seen as a top heel on WWE by the company, received a standing ovation after attacking both Cena and Edge to close out the show. And then we get to the big one. The moment where the anti-Cena sentiment would completely take over WWE. Sure, he was booed at WrestleMania. Sure, fans still routinely chanted their taste for the WWE Champion, but this is the match where John Cena for the first time walked into a sold out venue with fans fueled with hatred and anger towards him. Of course, I'm talking about his match with Rob Van Dam at ECW One Night Stand. After winning the Money in the Bank briefcase at WrestleMania 22, RVD announced that he would be cashing in his shot at the WWE Championship at One Night Stand, and there he would look to bring the WWE title to his home in ECW while also knowing that the hardcore New York crowd in the Hammerstein Ballroom would be completely behind the whole effing show. And with the support of the fans as well as an interference from Edge near the end of the bout, RVD would win the WWE Championship to close out the show. It was a cathartic moment for many hardcore wrestling fans as the crowd, according to the now infamous sign, probably would have rioted if Cena had retained the belt. But despite this incredible victory for Van Dam, he would quickly lose the WWE title to Edge on Raw after being arrested for drug possession. And with Cena's biggest rival on Raw winning the title, their heated feud would only grow with the all-important WWE Championship once again becoming a key factor to their story. From there, both men would go to war over the next few months, and Edge would make things even more personal heading into their WWE title match at SummerSlam by slapping Cena's father at his family home. Cena, enraged at this, brought all the anger to their match. However, despite him looking to avenge his father, Edge still retained the title after some assistance from Lita. However, this feud wasn't quite over after all the personal hatred showcased between them. After Edge threw Cena's custom spinner championship in the Long Island South, he would replace the design with his own custom rated R title. But after Cena threw Edge into the water as well, a rematch between them would be announced for Unforgiven. This time, the two men fought in a hellacious TLC match, and this brutal battle concluded in a big way as well, with Cena hitting the FU off the top of the ladder through two tables before pulling down the gold, once again becoming the WWE Champion. Cena would continue to hold the title throughout the rest of the year, after losing a triple threat match between himself, World Heavyweight Champion King Booker, and ECW Champion Big Show at Cyber Sunday, Cena would continue to battle against the top stars on every brand. At Survivor Series, Team Cena defeated Team Big Show in a traditional 5-on-5 five -five elimination tag team match, and from there, Cena would also earn a victory at the SmackDown exclusive show Armageddon as he defeated King Booker and Finley alongside Batista. Yes, the Super Cena push was in full swing around this time, with the fans growing in their divide over the WWE Champion as he appeared all over WWE programming. Around this time though, Cena would begin butting heads with Umaga. One of his biggest feuds around this time, the Samoan Bulldozer had routinely entered the ring and destroyed anyone who stood in his way, and this reputation of Umaga worked well with a character like Cena, as the WWE Champion really had to prove himself against this still undefeated threat. However, at New Year's Revolution, Cena would just barely retain after rolling up Umaga for the 
three count. Over the next few weeks, Umaga would continue to attack Cena until Cena agreed to a brutal last man standing rematch at the Royal Rumble. And in order to keep Umaga down for the count of 10, Cena had to throw everything at his opponent. Steel steps, low blows, and even a freaking television were all used during this match as he put on a hell of a performance. This match, through Cena's grit and determination, reminded some fans that Cena, despite the negative reception from the crowd, was still a good wrestler as he showcased perhaps his best asset all in one match. Sure, he's not a technical wizard like your Brian Danielson or Bret Hart's, but Cena knew how to put on a brawl with his smash mouth explosive style. And while he didn't necessarily win over any of his haters at this time, in hindsight, Cena used this match to once again showcase how good he can be given the right circumstance. However, with Umaga now put behind him, Cena would once again look ahead towards WrestleMania. He knew he was walking in with the title, but he just needed to find an opponent for the event. And while Cena was originally scheduled for a rematch against Triple H, the game was forced to sit on the shelf due to injury, so instead, he was lured towards another member of DX, Shawn Michaels. After both men joined forces to win the World Tag Team titles against Rated RKO, Shawn won a number one contenders match to earn a shot at Cena's WWE Championship. While still being cheered, both men walked into the the main event of WrestleMania as enemies, all as they continued holding the tag team gold. And following an exciting entrance from the champion that saw him enter the arena in a Ford Mustang, Cena would end the night by making Sean tap out to the STF. Following WrestleMania, Cena and Michaels would continue their rivalry. After losing the tag team titles in a battle royal, Cena was forced to defend his WWE Championship in a fatal four-way match at Backlash. There, he would take on Michaels, Edge, and Randy Orton, but not before having one of, if not the best match on Raw that year, which saw them compete in an hour-long fight that blew the roof off the entire building. But while Michaels may have won that hour-long match, Cena would keep a hold of the title after a successful defense at Backlash. After this rivalry with one of the best wrestlers alive in Shawn Michaels, Cena would begin a feud with someone even better in the ring. Sure, the Heartbreak Kid may have been a great challenge for Cena, but he couldn't possibly compare against the one, the only, the great Kali. That was a joke, if you didn't understand that. Anyway, um, at Judgment Day, Cena successfully defended his title against Kali by forcing him to submit to the STF. However, while Kali did in fact tap out, the massive height of the big man actually allowed him to have his foot under the bottom rope, with the referee not catching this detail in the finish. So, a rematch took place between them at one night stand in a false count anywhere match. And all joking aside, this match was actually better than it had any right in being. Sure, it was a little short, clocking in at around 10 minutes, but that probably helped in this match's favor given the two men in the ring. And to elevate the bout, a huge finishing sequence would take place as Cena hit the FU on Kali off a crane and onto the floor. This huge spot led Cena to retaining as he finally got rid of Kali once and for all. A few weeks later, following the 2007 draft, a lot of fresh faces went over to the red brand as new challengers emerged for Cena's title. So, at Vengeance Night of Champions, Cena would successfully defend his title against new names like Mick Foley, Bobby Lashley, King Booker, and an emerging rival, Randy Orton. Yes, Randy Orton, a man who, like Edge, will forever be linked to Cena's career. Those two, after crossing paths earlier in the year, would slowly start their feud around this time on Raw. Following a successful defense against Bobby Lashley at the Great American Bash, Cena would come to learn that his opponent for SummerSlam would be the Viper. But when Orton was unsuccessful in his match against Cena, he would desperately demand for a rematch to be made. And after being refused this opportunity by both William Regal and Mr. McMahon, Randy would take matters into his own hands by punt kicking Cena's dad at ringside. This enraged the champion to a boiling point, with the rematch now set for Unforgiven. However, Orton's plan would backfire on him as the match was thrown out by the referee after Cena's anger pushed him into furiously hitting his rival over and over again, leading to a disqualification. However, before a rematch could be held, Cena would unfortunately suffer an injury. After tearing his right pectoral muscle, Cena was forced to vacate the title in order to have surgery. This was definitely devastating to Cena who, due to his injury, was set to be out of action from anywhere between 6 months to a year. Even more devastating since WrestleMania wasn't too far off and it looked like he would miss the show. However, Cena would shock the world by returning a little bit earlier than expected because Cena took that 6 month to a year window and lowered it to 4 months in order to make a shocking return during the 2008 Royal Rumble and win the whole thing. Nobody could have even expected him to return, but he did as fans in a moment of sheer shock 
cheered the previously booed John Cena. From there, he won the Rumble and punched a ticket to WrestleMania 24. However, at this time, Randy Orton held the title, and that fact just fueled Cena with anger. This guy, the guy that kicked his father in the skull, now stood as WWE Champion, Cena couldn't wait to get his hands on Orton, choosing to instead fight it and exchange his WrestleMania shot for this bout. Orton agreed, only to purposefully get disqualified by slapping the referee. And because of this, Cena felt like a rematch was owed to him for WrestleMania, but the problem is that at No Way Out, Triple H actually won a number one contenders match to earn his own shot at the gold. Stuck between a rock and a hard place, Randy Orton was forced to defend his title against both men at Mania, but despite the best efforts of both challengers, Orton would retain the gold by pinning Cena after Triple H took him out with the pedigree. Yes, like the Viper that he is, Orton slithered out of the ring as he once again stole the WWE title. Following a few pay-per-view victories over JBL at Judgment Day and One Night Stand, Cena would parlay these two victories into another match for the WWE Championship currently held by Triple H. However, despite winning a number one contenders match against Jeff Hardy, Cena would lose to Triple H at Night of Champions. Heading into the event, Triple H was drafted over to SmackDown, but was still forced to defend his championship against Raw's John Cena. However, with this loss to Triple H, Cena would lose his opportunity to be WWE Champion for some while. In the meantime, Cena would continue to compete on Raw as he worked his way towards the World Heavyweight Championship, the new top title on the, on the red brand. But despite a brief run as World Tag Team Champions alongside Batista, Cena actually suffered a few high-profile losses to both JBL and Batista at Great American Bash and SummerSlam respectively. Sadly though, Cena would once again be placed on the shelf after suffering a herniated disc in his neck during, during the latter bout with Batista. This injury would take him out for a few months, but he soon made his return in the build-up to Survivor Series. On Raw, it was announced that he would take on whoever would be named World Heavyweight Champion following a steel cage match between Batista and Chris Jericho on Raw for the belt. And while many probably expected Batista to win so they could continue their feud, fans were shocked to see Chris Jericho walk into Survivor Series as champion against John. However, with Cena now fully healed and fully rested, he was able to score the victory and capture the World Heavyweight Championship at the show. Cena would continue to hold on to the title all the way until No Way Out. After successfully defeating Jericho and JBL to retain the title, Cena walked into the main event of No Way Out as the odds were stacked against him. In this Elimination Chamber battle for the belt, Cena knew that guys like Rey Mysterio, Kane, and Chris Jericho had what it takes to leave with the championship before heading into WrestleMania. However, a major twist in the match would turn everything on its head. After quickly losing his WWE Championship earlier in the night, Edge would insert himself into the chamber match for the world heavyweight title by attacking Kofi Kingston, another planned participant for the match. Because of this unexpected turn of events, Edge was able to suddenly replace Kofi before soon recapturing the World Heavyweight Championship. This led to a triple threat match between Edge, Cena, and The Big Show. Yeah, I know that last name seems a, a little bit out of place, and it is. So, after the marriage and subsequent feud between Edge and the general manager Vicky Guerrero, Vicky would look to punish her husband by forcing him to defend his title against the massive Big Show. And to make Edge's life even worse, Vicky would also add Cena to the match, who defeated both men to recapture the title at WrestleMania 25. Edge, unsatisfied by the loss, earned a rematch against his old rival for the belt. At Backlash, due to their personal hatred for each other, the match was made a last man standing match. However, while either man could walk out with the title, another man would make his way to get involved in the high profile bout. The Big Show interfered in the match, attacking Cena and throwing him through a spotlight. This explosive ending to the match left Cena unable to get up for the count of 10 as Edge recaptured the gold. From there, Cena would get his revenge over the next few months, earning back-to-back -back pay per view victories over the world's largest athlete. Cena would re-enter the WWE Championship picture following these wins for Big Mad John. Now that Cena's old spinner belt had returned to Raw, Orton would hold the belt as he continued feuding with Triple H throughout the year. And at Night of Champions, Orton would deal with his two biggest enemies on Raw in a rematch from WrestleMania 24. However, unlike the prior triple threat, Orton had backup in the form of Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase Jr., who helped Orton retain the title. This assistance by Legacy, which by the way, I just recently dropped a video on, while beneficial for Randy, only pissed off Cena. Now, even more determined than before, Cena would win a beat the clock challenge 
in order to become the number one contender. However, despite Cena's determination to become champion, Orton still retained the title at SummerSlam after yet another distraction by Legacy. With these constant distractions, Cena had reached a breaking point in the build-up to, appropriately, breaking point. So Cena challenged Orton to an I Quit match for the title, and an added stipulation was placed that Orton would be automatically stripped of the championship if anyone interfered on his behalf. In the end, both men brawled throughout the ringside area until Cena finally forced Orton to give up while Cena had him in a devastating STF that featured the assistance of handcuffs around Randy's wrist. The rivalry only continued to grow more intense heading into the next month while the rest of Legacy was stuck dealing with DX. Orton would fight to gain back the WWE Championship at Hell in a Cell, and with the match taking place inside the structure, Orton used any weaponry he could to take down the unstoppable Cena. Following an RKO and a punt kick, Kick, Orton would finally keep Cena down for the three to walk out the cell as WWE Champion. After the constant back and forth fights, with Orton and Cena gaining multiple victories over each other, a match to finally put an end to this feud was made for the upcoming Bragging Rights event. While the rest of the card was themed around the war between Raw and SmackDown, the main event saw Orton and Cena destroy each other over the WWE Championship in a 60-man Anything Goes Iron Man match. And this bout was absolutely insane. Like the feud itself, this match just kept escalating in intensity throughout the hour. Interference from Legacy, a DDT on the concrete, an attitude adjustment through the announce table, and more all took place in this match. Honestly, while a lot of their matches can be quite boring, this Iron Man match was actually an exciting conclusion to their feud as Cena recaptured the WWE Championship as the timer counted down to zero. And with Cena now back on top, he would be immediately placed in a high profile match against both Triple H and Shawn Michaels at Survivor Series. Yes, with his feud with Randy now over, Cena looked to establish himself as the top guy on Raw before defeating both members of DX, which he did with all three guys putting on an exciting match for the WWE Championship. However, now that he had beaten the established stars in Sean and Hunter, Cena would soon begin a feud with a young upstart in Sheamus, and to everyone's surprise, Sheamus actually won the WWE title. At TLC, Sheamus beat Cena in a tables match to win his first world title in the company to the shock of the WWE Universe. They could not believe that Sheamus, after being on Raw for only two months, was standing there as WWE Champion after just barely tossing Cena through a table. As for Cena, well, he knew just what he needed to get back in the title hunt. The Royal Rumble was right around the corner and he knew that a victory in the Rumble match would lead him to the main event of WrestleMania 26. However, like a certain Superman did a few years prior, another star made a shocking return from injury at the end of the Rumble in order to win the whole thing. And despite Cena being in the final two of the match, he would ultimately come up short to the returning winner, Edge. Despite this loss, Cena would soon recapture the WWE title heading into WrestleMania. After the championship was stolen from him by Sheamus at Elimination Chamber, Cena regained the belt after outlasting five other men in the chamber structure. However, over the weeks leading up to Elimination Chamber, Cena would unknowingly make a mistake that would cost him the title. After being gone for over a decade, Bret Hart made his return to WWE to start a feud with Mr. McMahon heading into WrestleMania. With this personal animosity between them after the Montreal screw job, Mr. McMahon man took everything that could thwart his plans to get rid of Brett personally. And on Raw, leading into Elimination Chamber, Cena saved Brett from an attack conspired by Vince, with his chosen hitman being Batista. After he made the save and following his victory in the chamber, Mr. McMahon walked out to get some revenge on Cena. He gave Batista an impromptu match for the WWE Championship, with Cena exhausted and hurt after surviving in the chamber. Batista would win the belt in a matter of seconds, and this victory ultimately led led to a rather interesting match between them at WrestleMania 26. Batista, the man who was always looked at as a guy just underneath John Cena, grew jealous of this fact. After all, their careers practically mirrored each other with both men coming from OVW at the same time and winning their first world titles on the same night. Yet it was always Cena chosen as the top star over Batista, and this jealousy was brought to their match at WrestleMania as Batista looked to prove why he should be the top guy in WWE. However, despite Batista's best efforts, Cena would once again prove just why he was WWE's top star by forcing the animal to tap out to the STF. 
This rivalry between them continued on though through the next few months. At Extreme Rules, they would battle in a last man standing match with Cena once again picking up the victory after duct taping his opponent to the ring post. The following month at Over the Limit, Cena would once again defeat Batista to retain the belt in an I Quit match. At the end of the match, after Batista had already quit and lost the match, Cena would look to put a permanent end to Batista's time as a challenger by hitting an attitude adjustment on the animal through the stage off the top of a car. And while this finish left Batista completely broken, Sheamus would look to raise his stock the following match by attacking Cena to close the show. But this wouldn't be the only attack on Cena over the next few weeks. Following his feud with Batista, concluding with Batista's departure from the company due to his anger at losing to Cena, Cena would see the odds start to stack against him. As his feud with the Celtic Warrior bubbled in the background, a new force in WWE would make their debut. The eight former contestants of the first season of NXT, now named The Nexus, made their impactful debut on the June 7th episode of Raw, and this group tore through Cena, ringside officials, and even the ring itself as they looked to reshape WWE in their own image during one of the most exciting debuts in WWE history. Cena, however, remained the champion as The Nexus continued to run rampant over on Raw, and despite him seemingly being attacked on all sides, Cena would have to contend with even more threats to his title at Fatal 4-Way, where he defended the gold against Sheamus, Edge, and Randy Orton. There, the Nexus would interfere again, assaulting both Cena and Edge as Sheamus used his attack to pick up a quick pinfall victory and steal the WWE Championship. He literally ran into the crowd holding the gold that he just stole from Cena as Nexus continued tearing apart the ring. At the following month's Money in the Bank event, Cena would get his rematch for the title within the confines of a steel cage, hoping to stop any more interference from the Nexus. However, this didn't stop the group from once again getting involved as they infiltrated the cage, allowing Sheamus to quickly escape the cage, barely holding onto the gold. Clearly, this Nexus problem wasn't going away. So, at SummerSlam, a 7-on-7 elimination tag match took place as Nexus took on all the men that they've punished over their short time on Raw. And in the end, attired John Cena would secure the victory over Nexus for his team by eliminating Justin Gabriel and Wade Barrett. Yes, despite the promise of the Nexus, this new group would suffer a massive loss in the main event of SummerSlam. This loss, as we will see over the next few months, would be the start of the downfall of the group and is one of those things that most people think shouldn't have happened and they think that the Nexus should have won that match at SummerSlam. However, while the group's loss may have been a pretty big blow to their credibility, they still had one more trick up their sleeve in order to remain on top of Raw. At Hell in a Cell, a match was held between John Cena and Wade Barrett with a huge stipulation added to it. If Cena won the match, then the Nexus would disband. However, if Wade won, then Cena would be forced to join the group. And after an interference from Husky Harris at ringside, for anyone that doesn't know, that was a very early Bray Wyatt, Wade Barrett was able to secure the victory and force John Cena to join the Nexus. Yeah, Cena was now part of the Nexus as he obeyed Wade Barrett. And now that Barrett had all the odds stacked in his favor, he would turn his attention towards the WWE Championship. So bragging rights, Wade Barrett challenged Randy Orton for the gold with John Cena standing by at ringside. Barrett, desperate to win the title, made a promise in the build-up to the show. If Barrett had lost this match against Orton, John Cena would be fired from WWE. However, Cena found a clever solution to this problem. Cena attacked Barrett during the match, handing the Nexus leader a disqualification victory over Orton, leaving Randy to remain champion per the champion's advantage. Barrett, furious at this result, earned a rematch for the title at Survivor Series. During the bout, John Cena was placed as the special guest referee for the match, with Barrett saying that if he didn't walk out of the show with the belt, then Cena would be fired from WWE. Cena, still holding on to his anger at Barrett, helped Orton retain and left WWE on the following episode of Raw. But don't worry, Cena would quickly make his return to the company following several attacks on the Nexus, breaking into arenas in order to take on the threat. Because of these attacks, the rest of Nexus pushed Barrett into rehiring Cena to the company, with Barrett only agreeing to do this if he could fight John Cena at TLC in a chairs match. And to close out the show, the returning Cena would secure a win before promptly luring Barrett towards the stage. There, after positioning Wade under a set of swinging steel chairs, John Cena would let all the chairs come crashing down, literally and metaphorically, burying Wade Barrett. From there, as soon as we started building into WrestleMania 27, life would slowly turn back to normal for John. 
Cena would earn a shot at The Miz and his WWE title during an Elimination Chamber match, with Miz retaining the belt against Jerry Lawler of all people that same night, locking in the main event for WrestleMania. However, in the build-up to the showcase of The Immortals, WWE would look to draw more attention to the event by adding a special guest host for the show. This was announced to be a returning Dwayne The Rock Johnson as the most electrifying man in the world hyped up the event leading into it. However, while the main event may have been John Cena vs The Miz, throughout the build, Cena and The Rock would trade verbal assaults on the mic. Cena even pulled out an old jersey to appear more like a certain young doctor of thugonomics from many years prior, rapping and insulting the Great One on Raw. These insults all came to a head at the main event of Mania. During Cena's match with The Miz, both men would end up spilling into the crowd as the referee called for a double countout finish. The Rock, as host, saw this as a disappointing end to the show, calling for a restart with no disqualifications. And just as the match started making its way back into the ring, the Rock would pop in to attack John Cena, hitting him with a massive rock bottom and allowing The Miz to retain the WWE Championship. Following this match, John Cena and The Rock would schedule a match for one year in the future. At WrestleMania 28, two of the biggest icons over the past few decades would meet in the ring for the first time ever. This was a blockbuster announcement, with Cena's entire following year feeling even more important now that this huge match loomed ahead. But until then, Cena would still remain an active WWE star. Sure, The Rock went away for a while, but Cena still competed night in and night out to remain on top of the company. At Extreme Rules, following a massive starship pain off the top of the steel cage, Cena was able to push through the pain and recapture the WWE Championship in a steel cage match between himself, The Miz, and John Morrison. By the way, I really think should have won the WWE Championship at some point around this time. And to make sure he had fully had the better of The Miz, Cena would also retain the title at Over the Limit a few weeks later in an I Quit match. And after retaining his title again at Capital Punishment to a freshly heal our truth, a match that we talked about more in detail during our weird WWE pay-per-views video, a new an unexpected chapter in Cena's career would begin to unfold. After becoming number one contender for the WWE title, CM Punk would make a huge announcement in the build-up to Money in the Bank 2011. He announced that his contract in WWE was coming to an end at the event in Chicago, where he planned to walk out of the company with the belt. Of course, you already know this part of the story, Punk cut his pipe bomb promo, he won the WWE Championship at Money in the Bank, and he blew a kiss goodbye to Vince McMahon as Cena failed to retain the title. From there, a new champion was crowned with Rey Mysterio winning the WWE Championship for the first time in his career. However, Cena would quickly defeat Rey that very same night in order to recapture the title, all before CM Punk made his own quick return to the company just a few weeks following his departure. Yes, Rey winning the WWE Championship and Cena winning it back before Punk's return, that all happened in two weeks. And with both Cena and Punk now holding the WWE title, a special match for SummerSlam was made between them. Triple H, the new man in charge of WWE, was the special guest referee for the bout as fans tuned in to see who would leave as the undisputed champion. However, neither Cena or Punk would leave that night as champion. After Punk earned another victory over Cena for the title, Alberto Del Rio would run down to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase following an attack by Kevin Nash on CM Punk. Del Rio won the WWE title, with both Cena and Punk now furious, and since they both deserved a rematch for the title, a number one contenders match was made on Raw featuring both Cena and Punk, with Cena earning a victory after more interference from Kevin Nash. Cena would go on to recapture the WWE title at Night of Champions, forcing Del Rio to tap out to the ST. But with all three men now aching to be named WWE Champion, the following month's Hell in a Cell event featured a triple threat cell match between them, and there Del Rio would recapture the gold before two of Cena's former challengers in R-Truth and The Miz would attack everyone in sight. Merging from under the ring, The Miz and R-Truth destroyed everyone in sight as the officials struggled to open the cell door. With Miz and Truth now having displayed a newfound air of dominance, they would eventually leave the cell, leaving destruction in their wake. Cena knew that he had to deal with these two now, or they'll never let up, so he challenged them to a match at Survivor Series, and while he originally had his friend Zack Ryder as his partner for the show, Miz and Truth would quickly get rid of Ryder, causing Cena to find a new partner, and to the shock of many, Cena wouldn't look towards a friend, but rather an enemy as his partner. Cena, to close out Survivor Series, beat Truth and Miz alongside The Rock. Sure, neither man could really trust each other given their history, but they were still able to get the job done before The Rock, looking to send a message to his WrestleMania opponent, nailed Cena with a rock bottom. 
Also, speaking of Zack Ryder, Cena would also slowly begin a feud with Kane around this time. Kane, looking to push Cena towards the darkness for the first real time in his career, continuously attacked Ryder as Cena watched his friend get hurt by the Big Red Machine. His mission was to force Cena to embrace the hate, something that many of the anti-Cena crowd wanted at the time. However, Cena was unwilling to change, no matter what Kane did to Ryder, opting to battle as a hero and avenge his fallen friend by taking on Kane at Royal Rumble. There, a double countout took place as Kane continued to assault both Cena and an injured Ryder with steel chairs. This brought the hatred feud towards Elimination Chamber a few weeks later where they fought in an ambulance match. And there, with Cena's match against The Rock just on the horizon, Kane would lose following an AA off the top of the ambulance. But now, Cena's next big challenger laid ahead of him as he entered the main event of WrestleMania 28. Following a year of back and forth insults between them, one of the biggest matches in WrestleMania history was finally set. And after 30 minutes of back and forth action, Cena would look to get the victory over The Rock. But in a rare moment of cockiness, Cena would attempt to add insult to injury by performing his own version of the People's Elbow. Rock, during Cena's charge towards the ropes, got back up on his feet and nailed them with a rock bottom for the one, two, three. This one crucial mistake by Cena left him on the receiving end of his biggest career loss with The Rock's music playing throughout the arena. This was my first ever WrestleMania that I personally attended, and I remember, you know, I was 10 years old being absolutely devastated that Cena lost to The Rock. This was a crushing defeat for Cena, who, on the following episode of Raw, wanted a rematch with The Great One, but after calling him down to the ring, Cena would not hear the same theme song that closed out the previous night's WrestleMania. No, he heard a much more terrifying sound. The scream each of Brock Lesnar's theme song echoed throughout the building with the Beast making his return for the first time in nearly a decade to lay out Cena with the F5. This massive moment led to Lesnar's first match back at Extreme Rules with John Laurinaitis, Raw's general manager at the time, explaining that Lesnar was sent to replace Cena in a brutal way. But despite Laurinaitis hoping for a different outcome, Cena was able to pick up the win after both men bled all over the canvas. However, now that Laurinaitis made his intentions of getting rid of Cena clear, their feud would continue heading into Over the Limit. There, Cena would end up actually facing the Raw general manager with an added stipulation from the board of directors to boot. If anyone interfered on Laurinaitis' behalf, they would be immediately fired. And to make things more complicated for him, if Laurinaitis lost the match, he would also be fired. However, with the odds stacked against him, Laurinaitis was still able to pick up the victory following the interference of the Big Show. Big Show had already been previously fired by Laurinaitis, so this twist worked in Laurinaitis' favor with Big Show already not being employed by the company. This feud between them finally cultivated in a steel cage match between Cena and Big Show at No Way Out. And with Cena winning the match, Laurinaitis would be fired from his role in charge of Raw due to the prior stipulation of the match. Cena earning another big victory following his match against Dwayne looked to once again enter the world title picture, and he would in fact gain a major opportunity towards that goal after being chosen to enter the Money in the Bank ladder match that year. And to close out the show, Cena climbed the ladder in order to win the Money in the Bank briefcase for the only time in his career. Yes, the guy who could essentially get a WWE Championship match at any time he wanted still had to win the Money in the Bank briefcase in order to earn a shot at the title, and he didn't wait too long before cashing in that briefcase either. Like RVD back in 2006, Cena announced that he would be cashing in the briefcase on the 1000th episode of Raw, looking to take the title away from CM Punk. However, Cena would lose his shot at the gold following more interference from the Big Show. And with all these players now involved in the WWE title scene, a triple threat match was made for SummerSlam that saw Punk retain against both John Cena and Big Show. The following night on Raw, Punk was granted the right to choose his next challenger at Night of Champions, choosing to take on Cena in another singles match for the title. But while this may have left Cena excited in the moment, the match would ultimately end in a draw with Cena pinning Punk off a top rope German suplex. However, due to Cena's shoulders also being on the mat during the pin, Punk would remain champion before attacking Cena after the bell. This match left Cena with an arm injury, not gaining another shot at the title until Survivor Series, where he once again failed to recapture the gold. However, Cena knew if he wanted to get another shot at the gold, there would only be one way to earn it around this time of year. The Royal Rumble was coming up, and he desperately wanted to re-enter the WWE title picture. So Cena entered the Royal Rumble at number 19, last eliminating Ryback to pick up the win. And with The Rock actually beating CM Punk in the main event of that same show to win the WWE Championship, the writing was clearly on the wall 
that we were redoing the years prior once in a lifetime clash between Rock and Cena. Yes, the main event of WrestleMania was set, with Cena looking to avenge his loss from a year prior. Cena walked into the bout determined to get the job done, stating that everything bad that happened to him over the prior year could be traced back to his loss against The Rock. This win, this WWE title, was the most important thing to Cena and he needed to win this. And in the main event of the show, Cena was able to do it. After countering a rock bottom attempt, Cena nailed him with the AA to capture the gold and Cena, now with a newly designed belt, shook hands with The Rock before he closed out the show, raising the hand of the new champion. This was also an angle that we talked about in my Rock career documentary video, you should definitely go ahead and check that one out. And John's reign with the title would see him take on opponents of all shapes and sizes. The night after WrestleMania, John Cena would defend his title against Mark Henry before Ryback came down to turn heel on the champion. This dangerous young star saw the title as his next prize to win, with him challenging Cena to a last man standing match at Extreme Rules. However, in the end, neither man would secure a victory over the other following a massive spear through an electrical wall by Ryback to Cena. Neither man could get up for the count of 10 following this explosive finish, leading to Cena retaining the title. At the following month's payback event, a rematch was held between them after the non-finish from Extreme Rules, and there, a three stages of hell match took place between them over the WWE title, with Cena able to just barely survive with his reign intact. Yes, Cena was on top of the world around this time, but Cena saw a fresh opportunity as WWE Champion around this time. He wanted to use his status as champion to help the next top star of the company, and after asking the fans on Raw just who they wanted to see challenge him next for the title, an overwhelming answer came in the form of Daniel Bryan. So due to fan demand, Bryan was inserted into the main event of SummerSlam as he challenged Cena for the belt. And to make sure everything would go over smoothly, Triple H served as the special guest referee, and after a back and forth fight between them, Brian was able to hit a running knee on Cena to win the WWE title. And following this match, Cena respectfully shook both Brian and Triple H's hand, leaving them to celebrate. Yeah, it was a happy ending indeed. Absolutely nothing else happened after Cena left the ring. Brian celebrated with the WWE Championship, and absolutely nothing took place after. Okay, but for real, after Randy cashed in his Money in the Bank briefcase on Brian to win the title, Cena would be taken out of action due to injury. But he did return soon enough, defeating Alberto Del Rio to recapture the World Heavyweight Championship at Hell in a Cell. Cena would then retain the title at Survivor Series before turning his attention not towards another challenger, but rather towards another champion. You see, despite being World Heavyweight Champion, Cena knew that he wanted to be the undisputed top guy in the company, so at TLC a unification match was held with both Orton and Cena putting their respective titles on the line. There, both men's deep hatred for one another boiled over in the ring, with the fight raging off throughout their main event TLC match. However, in the end, Orton would retrieve both belts and end the match as both WWE and World Heavyweight Champion. They would then have a rematch at the following month's Royal Rumble event over the titles. However, just as Cena looked to have the match won, the lights in the arena would suddenly go out before turning back on to see the Wyatt family had arrived at ringside. This arrival distracted Cena enough for Orton to take advantage and retain the titles. But while Cena continued to be on constant watch for the Wyatt family, he still wanted, like so many others in WWE, to be crowned the world champion. So the following month, Cena would enter the Elimination Chamber match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, once again losing following another interference by the Wyatt family. Bray Wyatt would continue to target Cena heading into WrestleMania 30. He, like Kane a few years prior, wanted to watch Cena fall into darkness, looking to expose Cena as a liar. He wanted to expose to the world that Cena's identity as a morally good and righteous hero was merely a hollow illusion in service of Cena's selfish desires. Near the end of their WrestleMania clash, Bray grabbed a steel chair from the outside and handed it to Cena. Getting down on his knees, Bray screamed at his opponent, doing everything he could to convince Cena to turn towards the dark side and hit Bray with the chair. However, just as it looked like he was about to do it, Cena instead used the chair on Eric Rowan before hitting the AA on Bray to win the match. 
A rematch was made for the following month's Extreme Rules pay-per-view, with Bray continuing his mind games during the build. On the go-home episode of Raw before Extreme Rules, Bray eerily brought out a course of children to perform on his behalf as they sang he's got the whole world in his hands. The same children Cena swore to protect as WWE's great hero were now seen standing alongside one of the most dangerous men in the entire company. And during their steel cage match at the pay-per-view, Cena would fail in his pursuit to once again beat Bray following the arrival of another child on Bray's side. Through this distraction, Bray was able to hit the sister Abigail and win the match. And with each man earning a victory over each other, a final bout between them took place at payback. This last man standing bout saw them battle all throughout the arena, with Cena just barely surviving the fight by burying Wyatt in the production crates, keeping him down for the count of 10. But Cena would look for another challenge at the following Money in the Bank pay-per-view. After winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 30, Daniel Bryan was forced to vacate the title due to injury. This heartbreaking development led to a massive ladder match over the vacant title, and while other stars like Bray Wyatt, Cesaro, and Roman Reigns all battled battled over the gold, Cena would climb the ladder to once again become WWE Champion. Yes, this unexpected injury to Bryan put WWE in kind of an awkward position with them putting the title back on the safe option of John Cena. And this booking scramble surrounding the WWE title would continue heading into Battleground, where Cena took on some of the top challengers for the title in Kane, Randy Orton, and Roman Reigns. Again, Cena retained the title. But following this victory, Cena looked to head towards SummerSlam, and with him seemingly defeating every other possible challenger, COO Triple H would handpick his own competitor to take on Cena. Brock Lesnar walked down to the ring that night at SummerSlam, hungry for destruction. While Cena may have had his number a few years prior upon his return, John would be in for a rude awakening as the Beast Incarnate put on a performance we've never really seen in a John Cena match before. Instead of the traditional back and forth clash that we're used to in John's matches, Brock instead completely obliterated him. Opening up the gates to Suplex City, Brock absolutely destroyed the champion by hitting 16 suplexes and two F5s over the course of a brutal 16 minutes. And with Cena now a broken man on the floor, Brock walked out of SummerSlam with a WWE World Heavyweight Championship. After failing to recapture the gold the following night of Champions event, Cena would begin pursuing a feud with the Authority for the rest of the year. After defeating Randy Orton to once again become number one contender for the title, the Authority offered Cena a chance to join their ranks. And Cena of course refused their offer after seeing just how corrupted the Authority had become over the past year. He, alongside guys like Dolph Ziggler, became the main targets of the group as a 5 on 5 tag team match was made for the upcoming Survivor Series, with the added stipulation that if the Authority lost, then they would be removed from power and forced to disband, only able to return if John Cena would have allowed it. However, near the end of the match, Big Show would turn heel for the 135th time in order to join the Authority, and with Ziggler standing as the last competitor for his team, it looked like the Authority had won the match. However, another shocking event occurred in the unexpected debut of Sting. Yeah, the final main eventer from WCW to enter WWE, Sting would make his debut here by helping Dolph Ziggler win the match on the behalf of his team, and with the authority now disbanded, the future looked bright for WWE. Well, for about a month. To close out the year, Seth Rollins would attack a recently retired Edge, threatening to hit the curb stomp on him unless Cena brought the authority back. And in order to save his former rival from serious injury, Cena would agree to bring them back. Because of Seth's involvement, a newly returned authority would hand Rollins a shot at the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, joining Cena and Brock in their match at the Royal Rumble. There, the three put on one of the best triple threat matches in company history, concluding with an F5 by Brock onto Rollins as he retained the gold. But as Cena was being interviewed about his future heading into WrestleMania 31 following the loss, a new face would emerge into Cena's life. The undefeated United States champion, Rusev, would immediately target John, looking to prove his Bulgarian dominance over the American hero. So a match was made for Fastlane, where Rusev, during the match, would hit him with a low blow before forcing him to pass out in the accolade submission, causing the referee to stop the match as Cena laid there in a heap. This led to an angry Cena targeting Rusev 
have over the next few weeks looking to earn a rematch for the championship at WrestleMania 31. And this match was eventually accepted by Lana on Rusev's behalf following an attack by John. So the match was officially made with Rusev entering the arena in spectacular fashion, coming in on a massive tank, a tank that he reportedly had sex with Lana in in the hours before the show, Rusev would look to repeat history once again by defeating John Cena. However, unlike their last encounter, it would be Cena who left with the title after hitting the AA to hand Rusev his first pinfall loss in the company. And this victory would begin Cena's iconic reign as United States Champion. This is the reign that introduced the US Open Challenge, with John entering the ring every week, laying out an open challenge for anyone willing to face him for the United States title. And as he secured more victories over Rusev at Extreme Rules and Payback, young and hungry stars came pouring in to try and take the US title away from John. Guys like Bad News Barrett, Dolph Ziggler, Cesaro, and more would all step up to the plate as they try to take Cena's title over the next few months. This event became a home for massive debuts as well, with a young Sami Zayn coming up from NXT to try to make a name for himself at Cena's expense. Speaking of Sami Zayn, his longtime rival and Kevin Owens would also make his way to Raw around this time to target Cena. Holding the NXT title, Owens came face to face with Cena during one of his open challenge segments. However, instead of challenging him for the title, Owens instead would lay out Cena before holding up his NXT championship and stepping on the US title and sending a message to the face of WWE. This led to a champion versus champion match in them at Elimination Chamber where Owens actually won. And this began a short series of matches between them which saw Owens lose to Cena at Money in the Bank and Battleground now having proven that he can hang in the ring with WWE's biggest star. Cena, now having won against so many of WWE's roster by this point in his US title run, once again felt as though he earned a shot at the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, so he pushed then-champion Seth Rollins into a match for the title, which Rollins initially refused. But after breaking Cena's nose during a match on Raw, Rollins changed his mind with them now scheduling for a winner-take-all match at SummerSlam for both of their titles. And after a tremendous match between them, it would be Rollins who earned the victory after an interference from the host, Jon Stewart. No, not the Green Lantern, but rather the talk show host who ran into the ring in order to hit Cena with a steel chair, allowing Seth to win the match. Due to the controversial finish of their match at SummerSlam, a rematch between Cena and Seth was announced for Night of Champions. There, while Rollins had to defend his WWE title against Sting in the main event of the show, he would first have to defend his United States title against Jon, and after an attitude adjustment, Cena was able to recapture the championship. With Cena now holding the belt on his shoulder, he would bring back his now beloved US title open challenge, citing that he would defend his title at Hell in a Cell against anyone willing enough to take him on. And to the shock of many in attendance, Alberto Del Rio would return to WWE that night to beat Cena for the title. And this loss would essentially write Cena off TV for a while in order to film the American Grit television series. Yes, this would be unofficially the start of Cena's slow walk towards Hollywood, with his appearance in WWE becoming less and less frequent from here as he soon suffered an injury upon his return in December. Although he did decide to pop in at WrestleMania 32 to say hello, helping The Rock fend off the Wyatt family before joining the electrifying superstar in celebration to close out the segment, Cena would soon make his official return to WWE in May of 2016, immediately being confronted by a recently debuted AJ Styles. However, while Styles initially appeared friendly to Cena, he would quickly attack John alongside Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson and turning heel in the process. Yes, this was the beginning of John Cena's legendary rivalry with the Phenomenal One. And following the attack, a match was made between them for Money in the Bank, which absolutely tore the house down. Two of the greatest of their generation went to war in the ring with Styles getting a victory following interferences from Gallows and Anderson. Because of this interference, John called upon another rising team in WWE in order to help him deal with the numbers game. Big Cass and Enzo Amore, perhaps the most beloved team in the WWE's tag team division at this point, helped Cena to gain a victory over the club in a six-man tag team match at Battleground. This victory for Team Cena gave John the excuse he needed in order to have a one-on-one -on -one singles rematch with Styles at the following month's SummerSlam event. There, the two once again put on a show stealing fight as AJ once again 
again secured a victory over Cena, this time without the assistance of Gallows and Anderson. This victory for Styles made him the number one contender to Dean Ambrose's WWE Championship following the recently returned brand extension. And at the SmackDown exclusive Backlash event, Styles would win the top prize in WWE for the first time. However, following this victory over Ambrose, Cena would return to try and earn that elusive win over AJ that has been taken from him multiple times up until this point. A triple threat match between Cena, AJ, and former champion Dean Ambrose was made for No Mercy, where AJ retained the belt. However, after yet another short absence, Cena would make another return to WWE and build up to the 2017 Royal Rumble event. Despite losing to him several times by this point, Cena still felt like he needed that victory over Styles, so he challenged him to a match at the Rumble, with him now looking to win a record-tying 16th world title. And after multiple losses to Styles over the prior few months, Cena was able to finally earn that elusive victory by hitting a groundbreaking attitude adjustment for the win, but unfortunately for him, it wouldn't be too long until he lost the belt, because during the following month's Elimination Chamber match for the WWE title, Cena was eliminated by the eventual winner Bray Wyatt and losing the championship in the process. However, during that match, Cena had unknowingly eliminated his WrestleMania opponent in the form of the Miz. Yeah, after main eventing WrestleMania against The Miz a few years prior, both men would look to battle at WrestleMania 33 after The Miz continuously pushed Cena into the match. He claimed that Cena was a hypocrite, saying that Cena no longer loved WWE since he was slowly transitioning away from the ring and into the bright lights of Hollywood. However, Cena countered by displaying a different kind of love. The love of a woman. Cena's longtime partner, Nikki Bella, helped Cena thwart off The Miz and Maurice at WrestleMania, and after securing the victory over them, Cena would see this as the perfect opportunity to propose to Nikki in the middle of the ring. Sure, we didn't know yet what would come from their relationship, but at the moment, this proposal was a heart-melting display of love from the face of the WWE. Cena would make his sporadic appearances throughout the year, competing in several one-off matches against the likes of Rusev at Battleground, Baron Corbin at Summer slam and Roman Reigns at no mercy. Yeah, Cena had officially become a part-timer by this point, always out promoting his next movie before occasionally coming in to work with the next generation of WWE superstars. Heading into the next year, with Cena seemingly on his way out the door with a legendary career behind him, Cena decided that he still had one final goal in mind heading into WrestleMania 34. For weeks on end, Cena would challenge The Undertaker to a match for the show, citing that a victory over Taker at WrestleMania would be the last major accomplishment that he would need to be recognized as the greatest of all time. But after weeks of challenging Taker to no response, Cena instead settled in to watch WrestleMania as a member of the audience. Soon enough, Cena would get the news the night of WrestleMania that Undertaker was there to face him in the ring. And despite the short notice, Cena would rush to get ready for this huge match only to lose to the dead man in a matter of minutes. Sure, it was a disappointingly short match between them, but considering the wear and tear of those in the ring, it made sense as to why WWE limited this match down to just a few minutes long. But despite this loss to Taker, Cena would have a bit of a repeat from the prior year, only having a few matches over 2018 whenever we needed him for a big match. He primarily appeared on some of WWE's international shows in foreign countries like Saudi Arabia and Australia. At the following year's WrestleMania 30, event, the show looked to actually be going without Cena's involvement. Outside of WrestleMania 32, where he was injured and unfit for competition, Cena hadn't missed a WrestleMania since his first one back at WrestleMania 20. However, Cena would in fact make a surprise appearance, interrupting Elias' concert for a special revival of the Doctor of Thugonomics gimmick. After wrapping Elias' face, Cena would hit him with a five-knuckle shuffle and an FU to the nostalgic delight of the crowd. Cena made his return the following year on the February 28th episode of SmackDown, and at first Cena spoke about WrestleMania 36 going on without him, saying that his time in the WWE had surpassed him with his own future now set to take place in Hollywood. However, as he stood atop the ramp saluting the crowd, the light suddenly flickered and WWE's newest demonic entity in The Fiend appeared behind him 
pointing to the WrestleMania sign, Bray Wyatt's newest form challenged Cena to a match who agreed to revisit his WrestleMania rival six years after first defeating him back at WrestleMania 30. However, this WrestleMania has gone down in infamy as the strangest in history with it taking place in front of no fans. Yes, this was right at the beginning of the COVID pandemic with WWE now heading into WrestleMania as the underdog. They threw everything they could to make WrestleMania 36 an exciting show, with Edge making his return to singles action and with the Boneyard match all being presented at the show. However, another major talking point was the special Firefly Funhouse match between Cena and The Fiend. This surreal experience of a match saw manipulating Cena in the confines of his mind. Cena's history, as well as the history of pro wrestling as a whole, was manipulated by Bray and used as a weapon. This match was a complete fever dream and one of my favorite things I've ever seen in the WWE, with Bray acting as a puppeteer against his foe. And in the end, The Fiend would win before John vanished from WWE. But in his absence, WWE continued on. New faces would start their rise and massive transformations would take take place amongst the top of the WWE food chain. Most importantly, Roman Reigns would finally turn heel and become the Universal Champion, taking his place as the Tribal Chief. He dominated SmackDown, defeating anyone and everyone who stood against him, all as Paul Heyman stood at ringside. At Money in the Bank, Roman successfully defended his title against Edge in the main event of the show. Outside of WrestleMania 37, this was the first WWE event to not be held in the Thunderdome since the pandemic, and WWE decided to end it in a huge way for those in attendance. Just as Roman looked to close out the show with the Universal Universal title held up high, the crowd came unglued as John Cena made his surprise return for the first time in over a year. Coming face to face with a new top main event star in WWE, John made his intentions clear. He wanted the Universal title, but despite a valiant effort, Cena was unable to secure a victory as Roman retained the title at SummerSlam, leaving John to head back to Hollywood for another absence. He did return in December of 2022, joining Kevin Owens to defeat Roman and Sami Zayn in a tag team match on SmackDown though. And then Cena soon made another return in the buildup to WrestleMania 39, following weeks of insults from the United States champion Austin Theory. Theory was jealous that despite being the US champion, people seemed to be more excited at the prospect of John Cena returning than his own reign as champion. So Theory chose to defend his title against John, hitting Cena with a low blow before an A-Town down for the victory at WrestleMania Hollywood. So after this, amidst the Hollywood writer and actor strikes, Cena would be announced by WWE to actually make an extended return to the company. This was of course this year, and he hosted the Payback event in September, becoming the surprise special guest referee in a match between LA Knight and The Miz. There he raised LA Knight's hand in victory as the two started becoming more friendly from here on. However, while Cena may have gained an ally in LA Knight, he gained several more enemies in Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa over the next few weeks. They were tasked with getting rid of Cena as he posed a major threat to the bloodline. Cena now cornered, called upon AJ Styles to join him in taking on the Bloodline at Fastlane, but Styles was taken out by the Bloodline and Cena was left without any help. That is, before the wildly popular LA Knight ran down to save Cena from an attack by the Bloodline, choosing to join Cena in that tag match. At Fastlane, they were able to pick up the win in exciting fashion, and because of the growing feud between the Bloodline and Cena and Knight, the following Crown Jewel event featured two marquee matches coming out of Fastlane. While Knight challenged Roman for his world title in the main event, earlier on the card, Cena went one-on-one -on -one with Solo Sokoa, and there, despite Cena's best efforts, Solo would pick up the win following a whopping 15 Samoan spikes to the throat of John Cena. Yeah, despite a career of Cena being unstoppable, much to the mixed reaction of the fans, we close out this video with John Cena's destructive loss to Solo Sokoa. Putting over the next generation in Solo Sokoa, Cena had seemingly realized that his legacy as one of the biggest stars in the company had been cemented. He doesn't really need any more big wins to have his name etched in history, as we saw throughout his career. 16 world title reigns, an era-defining position on top of WWE and millions of dollars earned from his likeness, Cena has built up a solid case for being on the Mount Rushmore of wrestling, if not being the absolute greatest of all time. Even when fans were at their angriest points, Cena always walked out to the ring to put on a show for us. 
Sure, a lot of his accolades may have felt unearned in the early stages of his career, but then again, he has done a lot to change the perception of fans. Just look back at his entrance heading into ECW One Night Stand 2006. The amount of hatred he had gained from the WWE crowd was unlike anything I've ever seen in wrestling. Then, fast forward and see how fans responded to him these days. Sure, there will always be a pocket of WWE fans that hate him, but that pocket has shrunk considerably over the years. Multiple injuries, match of the year contenders, and a step away from the overexposing lights of WWE have done a lot for Cena over the back half of his career. Sure, when we look back at his first few runs as WWE Champion, the run that saw WWE push him to the moon, it's clear that Cena was being handed a lot that he perhaps wasn't ready for, but with WWE handing him the world, Cena was forced to carry that responsibility on his back, and by pushing himself into that position, John Cena became the face of the WWE for nearly two decades. It's not an easy task for anyone, but Cena had proven time and time again that he has what it takes to stand on top of WWE. WWE, and through those words he lives by, hustle, loyalty, and respect, John Cena had become one of the most influential WWE superstars of all time, and in my opinion, the greatest of all time. Subscribe if you enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching.